everybody put your hands together for Patrick Smith. These, these are never tall enough for me. <laughs> so, I want to talk about this wonderful, sexy thing that we all have with us here today. Yeah! Yeah! The The guillotine is a gruesome tool that has served to end the lives of hundreds of thousands. For some, it symbolizes tyranny, and for other people, it symbolizes violent resistance to tyranny. Right. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. <clears throat> In the late 1700s, Josef Guillotin, a French physician, Thanks, proposed that a new and simpler method of execution by decapitation be designed when people finally started getting uncomfortable with the capital punishment technology of that time. Antoine Louis then invented this machine. <laughs> Since antiquity, for thousands and thousands of years before that time, thieves, murderers, and treasonous people were executed by putting them through a process called the breaking wheel. Yeah. And I'm not going to really describe that in too much detail here today. You can Google it if you want to be appalled. But basically it meant taking a wagon wheel and completely breaking a person's body and then weaving their body into the wheel and hanging them on display. And that is a cartoon version of what it actually was. <laughs> it only took around 7,000 years of this for humanity to finally say, hmm, maybe that's a little bit much. <laughs> <laughs> There was another problem of his time that Yosef wanted to solve. There was inequality between the royalty and the commoner, even in the death penalty. Nobility, you see, got an executioner with a sword or an axe to chop off their heads. This had its own problems because sometimes it took multiple swings and people would pay the executioner extra just to sharpen his blade to stop that from happening. But uh, commoners, on the other hand, just got the noose often. And it's not like, it's not like you see in the Western movies. Death by hanging was sometimes a long, drawn-out, very uncomfortable process for everybody involved. So Yosef wanted to devise a more humane method of execution, as well as a unifying method to be used on kings and beggars alike, quick and painless as possible. On April 25th, 1792, they used their new device for the first time on a murderer and thief. Both Mr. Giotin and Mr. Louis were impressed with its effectiveness. They were also both deeply frightened by it. A fine machine, they said, so long as its facility is not abused. Louis in particular was surprised by its celerity of function. For the first time in, in history, a government had a fast, efficient and socially acceptable method of killing people. <laughs> and kill people it certainly did. To the tune of somewhere around 200,000 lives. A few tyrants, a lot of evil people, and way too many innocents. There's another weapon that actually has far more blood to its name than this one. I believe most of you here are carrying some of them right now. Some estimates place a body count to those devices at about a quarter of a million worldwide every year. Wow, thank you, Barry. Like the guillotine, they have ended the lives of a few tyrants, a lot of thank evil you. people. Thank you, John. And way too many innocents. Thank you, Barry. But there's a difference, though, between these two weapons. For one, it wasn't really possible for every commoner to have a self-defense close-range tactical guillotine in their house <laughs> to discourage the king's guard when they came around looking for taxes. The difference is that while this weapon lowered the kings to share the same punishment as the beggars, these weapons that you guys are carrying here today elevate the individual to the level of a sovereign. Yeah. They allow each of you to be your own kings and queens, to stand equal to every other person, no matter their station, no matter their title, no matter if you're a small child or an elderly woman, no matter their level of imagined authority. The point of open carry events like this is not to play games or to show off our toys. The point is for the government to take a brief respite from the ever-present, sorry, the point is for the governed, us, 
to take a brief respite from the ever-present involuntary control by the political ruling class and to act of our own volition for once telling the lawmakers and the enforcers what is going to happen instead of the other way around. Wow, These thank, weapons are thank not you, Central pieces. Michigan. They are the people. They are you setting your terms for a change. Amen. And doing so in a language, in the only language that governments understand. <laughs> the language of force and violence. Amen. Right now, you are all feeling what it's like to do something loudly and publicly without first begging some bureaucrat for permission. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 You are feeling Woo. your own self-ownership. You own yourselves today. And that is what I believe this march is about. We carry this weapon here today to remind them that they do not and never did exist above us. And we carry these weapons to elevate ourselves above the obedient commoners that they need us to be. Remember this feeling. Share it with everyone you know. Teach people the power of their self-ownership, of their sovereignty. Be the kings and queens that you are. Thank you. Tell the brother! Yes! Yes! Yeah. 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 Yeah.